Hi guys, Mr. Hill here with your maths for today. We're going to look more at how we work with numbers that are going to have remainders because we've they've been neatly parceled up most of our numbers that we've worked with so far. So what we've divided by has been nice and easy. We've had nice whole number answers. So today we're going to look at how we deal with those numbers with remainders. We're also going to look a bit more at our reasoning questions and really how we pull out the information that we need. Something to get you started with. Have a look at these questions carefully because once you've worked out one of them, the other two might become very obvious as to how to work them out. Pause the video here to complete this. How did you get on? So looking at our first question, we know 55 divided by five. We all know our five terms table really well. It's going to be 11. Now we can use that little bit of knowledge to work out the other two answers. We do think about what's the same and what's different. We don't know what the first number in question two is, but we do know that we're dividing by five and the answer is 1,100. If we use what we already know, that 55 divided by 11, sorry, 55 divided by five is 11. Can I use that knowledge to work out that something divided by five is 1,100? Well, I know that 1,100 is 100 times 11. So if my answer has been multiplied by 100, surely the number that's missing from my question has been multiplied by 100. And you'd be right, 5,500, that's 55 times 100. Question three, both numbers have been multiplied by 10. So the trick or the thing not to be caught out by here is that we've looked at these before where one of the numbers has been multiplied by 10. So the answer has gone up by the same, by being multiplied by 10. In this case, both numbers have been multiplied by 10. So the answer is not going to change. The answer is actually going to be 11. OK. Let's move on. Let's start looking at some questions, pulling the information out of them that we need. So Eva has got 13 straws. She wants to make them into triangles. How many triangles can she make? We need to think about actually what the question is that we're being asked. So what could the question be? If you said 13 divided by three, you'd be right. What we were asking for, we we're being told Eva's got 13 straws and she's making triangles. So we need to remember that triangles have got three sides. So we'll need three straws for each triangle. So we can work this out. We can move the triangle the straws and make our triangles. So there's our first one, our second one, our third one. Yep, still got enough straws left. Oh. I've got one left over, but how many whole triangles have we got? We've got four whole triangles and one left over on its own. How do we write this down? What we need to remember to do is it's four and then the letter R and then the number that's left over. If we just wrote down four and one, you could be said that you've written 41, which would be an incorrect answer. You need to make sure that you write it down correctly. So we've got four, so we've got four complete groups of three, four complete triangles, and we've got a remainder of one. So using that, have a go at these questions. Pause the video here to have a go. How did we get on? So we know what? we know that we're dividing all of these by three. Well done. So my first one, Tommy has got 14 straws and he wants to make triangles. So again, we're gonna take 14 divided by three out of this as our question. There's one triangle, two triangles, three triangles, four triangles, and no, I can't quite make it to another triangle. I've got, two left over this time. We move on. We've got four remainder two as our answer. Now Dora's got 15 straws. So I already know I can make 
four complete triangles. So surely the answer to this is four remainder three. It's not, and I can hear you all shouting at me that it's not because my remainder is the same as the number I'm dividing by. I can make one more triangle here. The question we're answering is 15 divided by three. So we're still working with three. I've got three left over, so I can't have a remainder of three. So I'm going to make my next triangle. So here I've got five complete triangles. So 15 divided by three is five. Jack has got 16 straws and he wanted to make them into triangles. He can make five triangles, but he's got one left over. He's got one more than 15, which we know will give us an exact number of triangles. So 16 divided by three is five with a remainder of one. OK, thinking about remainders, we're going to move on. Could these calculations be correct? Now, I'm not expecting you to solve them. I want you to look at them and think about the numbers that are in there. So pause the video here and complete these questions, put them into the right box. Okay, how did we get on? Did you spot the mistakes that have been made? So if we look at our first one, 3,924 divided by three. I only really need to look at the remainder here. My remainder, is the same as what I'm dividing by. And we can't have that. We've just worked that through with the straws and the triangles. So I can say that that is definitely incorrect. Our second question, 3,242 divided by four. Again, I'm just going to look at the remainder and the divisor. I've got a remainder of two and my divisor is four. It could be correct. So I'm going to put that in the could be correct box. That leaves me with my final question, 5,626 divided by five. Again, I'm going to ignore all the numbers. I'm just going to look at the remainder and the divisor. My remainder is bigger than my divisor, therefore it cannot be correct. It's definitely incorrect. And that goes in there. Well done if you got those. As we work through, just remember, if your remainder is the same as or greater than the number you're dividing by, check your answer. OK, we're going to have a look at this one. 5,291 divided by 4. We're going to use the written method alongside it. So we need to put our counters in our columns to help us. There we go. 5,000s, 200s, 910s and one one. We're going to divide this by four. So what we're going to do, we're going to box up lots of four in each column and we're going to record them as we go through using the written method. So starting with our thousands, I've got one lot of four. I haven't got another lot of four, I've only got one. So above the five in my calculation, I'm going to write one. I need to exchange up the thousand into my hundreds. So I'm going to exchange my 1,000 into 10 hundreds. So I've now got 12 hundreds. So I need to note that in here as well in my written method on the side. So I'm now dividing 12 by four. So one, two groups of four, three groups of four. So this one works out exactly right. I've got three groups of four in there. So I'm going to write down my three above. I've got nothing to exchange up because I've used every single counter in that column. Move on and look at my tens now. The same process. One lot of four, two lots of four. I've got a, the same problem I had with my thousands. I've got one left over that's going to need to exchange. So to do that, I'm going to put the two above the nine. I'm going to exchange my ten for ten ones. I've now got 11 ones, so I need to make sure I know that when I'm my written method. And I'm back to the same method as I did before. One lot of four, two lots of four, and I've got three left over. I don't quite have another group of four to use. 
So my two goes there. I don't have another column to exchange these into. So what I need to do, these are my remainder. These are what's left over when I've completed my calculation. So again, remainder three. So if you're using the written methods, how it's there is perfectly acceptable to answer it with. I've added it at the top there, 1,322 with a remainder of three. Okay, your turn now. Have a go at these questions. Use the methods that it tells you to use. Take your time. Pause the video here to complete your work. How did we get on? If you feel like you've maybe struggled a little bit with these, you've not quite understood, go back and rewatch the video from or the beginning of this video. Maybe go back and watch yesterday's video as well. Take some of the numbers that we're using with you, put them in, follow the method through and see if you can work out the answers. It's more about getting the process of working it out, using the method correctly. That's what we wouldn't to see you doing. Ready for some answers? Let's move on then. Here are your answers. Pause the video here to check your answers. Okay, just looking at question three, are any of the columns empty? Talk to a patent partner about why this has happened. Well, there's not going to be a remainder of four because we're dividing by four. Every single one of those questions is divided by four. As we know, we can't have a remainder that's the same as, that's equal to, or greater than the number we're dividing by. Okay, let's move on. We're going to get a little bit more complicated. We're going to do some really good thinking through our reasoning questions next. So, question for you. Is 5,627 divided by 5 equal to 1,126? No. It's not. Can you think why it isn't? Take a moment, have a think about why it's not correct. Okay, what answers did you come up with? The reason it's not correct is because when we're dividing by five, the five times table follows a pattern. Five, 10, 15, 20. It goes fives and zeros. This number here doesn't end in a five and it certainly doesn't end in a zero. So it can't be an equal number in the five times table. So whilst it is a whole number, 5,627 is a whole number. As I said, it doesn't end in a five or a zero. So our answer must have a remainder to it. So the correct answer is 5,627 divided by five is 1,125 with a remainder of two. So it's worth checking if you know things from your times tables, for example, any number multiplied by 10 ends in a zero, any number in the five times table either ends with a five or a zero. These will help you to be able to check your answer and go, hang on a minute, something doesn't look right here. So we're at a wedding. Let's just say we've maybe gone to the Philippines for a wedding. There are 349 people that have made the journey here. They're sitting at tables of eight. How many tables are going to be needed for this? The first thing we need to think about is what is the question actually asking us to work out? The question it's asking us is 349 divided by eight. So let's have that written down. Now I can't divide three by eight. There are it's just impossible. So it's going to be zero. I need to exchange my 300 to my 10. So I've now got 34 tens. I can do that because 34 is greater than eight. The answer to that's going to give me four and I've got a remainder of two. So I'm going to move exchange my 20 or my two across i'm going to have 29 ones so i'm going to divide 29 by eight that's going to give me three so i need 43 tables and we have a remainder of five 
So I've got 43, that's how many tables I'm going to need. Or is it? Have a think for a moment. Am I correct? If you said no, Mr. Hill, you are very much incorrect. You're right. What I've managed to do, I've got 43 tables, but it means there's going to be five people without a table to sit at and enjoy their delicious Philippine wedding feast. So we actually need to round up in this instance to 44 tables. That way, everybody then has a seat. Everybody has a table to sit at to eat their dinner from. Okay, here are some questions for you to have a go at. Pause the video here to complete these. How do we get on with these? These are certainly a lot more tricky and a lot more complicated to get through. So question four, is Eva correct? Yes. If you look at the numbers that each of these numbers end, so if you look at the digits that each of these numbers ends with, they're all one more than a multiple of five. So you've got 15 for the first one, and you've got 16. 61 is one more than 60. 81 is one more than 80 and 86 is one more than 85. So they're all one more than the nearest multiple of five. Question five, most made the same mistake I did with the question that we started with beforehand. Question seven and eight. Put your answers in for me. Let's have a look, see how well you've understood what we've done. Well done today. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you for the next time.